Hey guys. Oh my gosh. <laughs> We're going to do this really, really old fashioned. Um, <clears throat> I'm here on my phone. I should be able to see your comments as I am talking. So <sighs> let's try this again. I see Julie just popped on. Okay, great. I see a, another viewer. I can't see who you are though. Um, as you're coming on, say hello, because I'm having major technical difficulties here. I had planned to do this on Zoom so I could talk with you and also share some slides. But um, if you caught the front end of my live um, before I lost connection, you'll know that I'm having major internet issues um, tonight. It seems like once 630 hits, this darn internet is just like overloaded or something and uh, we can't connect so John and I are super frustrated because um, we're having a hard time if we want to watch a movie or something at night we don't do cable we just have like Netflix and Hulu and all that jazz um, so we've been struggling a little bit to get our internet working at night, but I'm here. I figured something out. There was no way I was going to miss our mystery event because <coughs> I have been super excited for it. Of course, I've been posting all over the place. I've sent a number of emails to you that are on my email list. Um, if you're not on my email list, you're going to want to get on my email list. And when you sign up, I give you a fabulous uh, PDF tutorial for 15 amazing cards. Um, they're up to date. They're using current product. So as soon as you sign up for that, that gets sent to your inbox. And plus, when you sign up for that newsletter list, that's how you win prizes. And I have some prizes tonight to give away. So I'm going to flip my... Can you guys see this? Oh, I can't even believe I'm doing it this way, you guys. Oh... Let me see. I wonder if I should. Oh, rotate. You can't turn your phone while live. Okay, well, we're just going to have to back up then. Um, okay. So, I can't believe I'm doing it this way. This is like so old school, you guys. Um, all right. Whoever's watching, say hello. Um, how is this going to work? So here's the deal. I got to back up because this screen is huge. You guys can see my mess and all my candy on my desk. Um, I have a card. This card is here in this envelope. I'm not going to open it up because that'll give it away. And I have typed up instructions for how you make that card here. I'm going to flip this around so you can see me here in a slideshow. So um, what I'm going to do is go through step by step how to make the card that I made. But you guys get to pick your own colors for the card for your card base, for your um, layers. You get to pick your own focal image, focal point image. You get to pick your own, um, your own, what is it? Designer series paper, your own embellishment. So your card is not gonna look like mine, um, not at all. And you're gonna stamp along with me. I'm gonna give you hints and clues and then um, when we're done, I have a post where you can um, upload a picture of your card. And the cool thing is that um, when you order in this event, you also are entered as long as you use this mystery code, um, this one right here that's highlighted in yellow, as long as you use that mystery host code, if your order is over $25, every increment of 25 bucks, hi Robin, I'm so glad you could make it back. I've been having technical issues, but every order of an increment to $25 enters you for a drawing to win the Hostess Reward shopping spree. So if you place a $50 order, you get two entries. 
that's how that's going to work. I've got prizes to give away besides the hostess code. I have a card kit here to make, let me count, four of these gorgeous cards. Everything in this kit is cut um, for you. Hopefully the directions clear up. You'll have to let me know if they don't when I switch the slide. Um, but I have instructions here, um, or a totally cut card kit. All the designer series paper is cut to size. Those punches, the circle punch, not the leaf punch, but the circle, it's all in here. The strips all in here, designer series paper in here. And you even have strips um, that coordinate with the designer series paper to decorate your envelope. So you, if you don't have the autumn blessings or beautiful autumn bundle, you don't have to use this leaf punch. You could swap that out with something else that you like, your favorite stamp set. I see I've got four people watching right now. Make sure when you pop on, you say hello. Tell me where you're from. Um, I don't know who's watching to draw my prize live unless you say hi. I'm going to flip this back again. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Rose Grunewald, and I am coming at you live here in my stamping studio in New Holstein, Wisconsin. We are about to do a mystery stamping event, so I'm going to flip my slide here so you can see the supplies list. Um, we're doing a mystery stamping event tonight, and I'll be drawing a mystery hostess winner. So you, again, I posted up above this video should be some links. There's a link to order that already links you to the host code for this um, event. There's also a link to get added to my newsletter list and to complete a door prize drawing form. And I included the link to where you're going to post your completed uh, pictures of your completed cards when they're done. Um, I'm doing one live door prize drawing tonight and I'm doing another one on Friday along with the hostess drawing on Friday so that those of you who can't catch me live still have time to make your creation and play along and catch the replay. All right. Um, Julie, you had said the directions were blurry before. Let me know if these are blurry. I will try to get it clearer. Um, but here is your supplies list. I'm going to read this through one by one in case you can't see it. You need some designer series paper, your choice. That piece should be cut three and a half inches by four and three quarters inches. You'll need a coordinating card stock for your card base. And I will give you the size in the instructions as we go along for that. You're gonna need a three by three piece of coordinating card stock. And that's gonna be for, um, the layer behind your focal image and you're going to be die cutting that so um i said three by three because i figured that would be the appropriate die cut but if you um if you want something let me see if this helps if i get a little closer here um stamps you're going to need some sort of focal point image, whether that would be a flower, a Santa, a deer. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, and you're either going to die cut that focal point image or you're going to end up fussy cutting it. And for this card, the way I've described it, a focal point image that's at least two to two and a half inches tall is ideal. And then you're going to need a sentiment. And there is um, a scrap of coordinating cardstock that I listed up above in the paper, and your sentiment needs to fit onto that scrap. So if your scrap is two inches long, don't pick a sentiment that's, you know, four inches long. Ink, you'll use a stamp pad in the color of your choice. And if the focal image you've chosen needs to be colored, then you're going to need something to color it in. Other um, supplies you're going to need, coordinating twine, thread, or some sort of thin ribbon. We don't want any thick. I haven't designed this card for thick ribbon, but if that's what you prefer, that would be okay too. And then you're probably going to need a punch 
a circle or a label die that's at least two to two and a quarter inches in size, your choice, whatever you would like to use. And then you probably are gonna need some sort of die cutting machine if you're using dies. Um, a paper trimmer, bone folder, adhesive. Before I move on to our first step, is there any questions about the supplies list? If you have any questions, post them below. I'm able to see your comments as you are making them. I'm gonna move forward here. See if I can try and do this while I'm holding my phone. There we go. Oh my gosh, I made these so big. Um, I wonder if this would be better if I just went like this. Julie, let me know if you can see that a little bit better. I think that um, the large screen maybe is making it a little bit blurry. Um, okay, <clears throat> so... First thing we're gonna do is prepare our card base. So out of the coordinating colors that you chose, you are going to want to choose what color is going to serve as your card base. <coughs> so you have your designer series paper. Pick a coordinating color to serve as the base for your card. And we're gonna cut this designer or this card stock down to four and a quarter inches by 11 inches. So if you've got your trimmer out, go ahead and cut that. Basically, you're cutting your cardstock in half the tall way. Now, because this is a tall card, I've given you, oh, the large screen was better. Okay, thanks, Julie, I will switch. Thank you. Um, since I've given you a hint down here at the bottom, the card base will be a tall card that opens from the bottom. So you are going to want to score this card base so that you've got a nice crisp fold. This is a tall card that opens from the bottom. So you're going to want to score and fold that cut piece at five and a half inches. If you don't like tall cards, you're welcome to cut it the other way, but then make sure your card opens from right to left. You aren't going to want it to be the rectangular card. Um, you'd want it to be ultimately looking like this instead of opening from the bottom like this. Okay. Unless you totally want to go off the rails and do whatever you want, then that's fine too. <clears throat> Is everybody ready for me to move on or do you have questions? If you are ready, someone give me a thumbs up or hit the like. I don't want to move forward too quickly. I tried to keep these slides so that um, you could stamp along with me, but I am trying to be careful not to go too quickly. I was going to do this along with you, but because I have to hold my phone, I am <laughs> not able to do it. So it's hard for me to know if I'm going too fast or too slow. <clears throat> okay, we're going to prepare everything first, and then we're going to put our card together. So next, we're going to prepare our focal point. So whatever image you wanted to use as your focal point, whatever that might be, and I gave you a hint in our supplies list, I put ideally this image should be approximately two and a half inches tall. Two inches tall will work just fine too. Um but you're probably gonna want a taller image. I see a couple people hopping on now. I've got four people watching. Um, for those newbies hopping on, say hello. Um, let me know that you're here so that I get can um, enter you for the drawing for um, the live card pack drawing. Um, <clears throat> I'm having technical difficulties, so we're doing it this way, okay. Um, so you're going to stamp the image in the color of your choice. Now, if you need to color it, you have to be cognizant of how you want to stamp it. For example, if you're using alcohol blends, you are going to want like a memento ink um, before you color it. So stamp your image. And if you need to color it, color it in. If you're using a two-step stamp, 
Go ahead and do all of that that you need to do that's going to be your focal point image. So this is going to be the main thing that you're seeing on your card. For example, for those of you who are new to stamping and are not sure what a focal point image is, this leaf here in the circle is my focal point image. It's the main image on my card when I see it, when I open up that envelope and I look at the front of that card. Now, once we have stamped and colored our focal point image, we are either going to die cut it or fussy cut it if you don't have a coordinating die for it. So for those who are wondering what does die cut or fussy cut mean, if you're new, um, if you're new, you probably don't have a die cutter and fussy cut just means you take your scissors and you cut really intricately and carefully all around the image that you um, stamped. If you're die cutting it, you likely have some coordinating dies for this image and you're gonna run that through your big shot or your other die cutting machine, whatever it is that you have. Sorry, I had to get some water. Are there any questions about step two, preparing our focal point? Let me know when you're ready to move on by hitting the like or telling me in the comments. I think the like shows up a little bit sooner than the comments. Um, I don't want to go too fast. I also don't want to go too slow if you're sitting here bored. For those who are catching the replay, you can play right along with us. And um, you also get a chance at a prize because I've got two of these card kits I'm giving away. Giving away one of these live. And I'm giving one away to those who um, post their photos in the link above. So above this live video is a few links and you can order through one. You can post your um, photo of your prepare or your project in one. And in a third one, you can sign up for my newsletter. Poor Robin and Julie, I keep repeating myself for the new people who are popping on. You've probably um, already um, memorized what I'm saying because I've said it so many times. I really wish we weren't having internet issues. We're going to have to call our people tomorrow and find out what in the heck is going on. Does anyone have any, if you have any questions at all about this, um, post it in the comments. Even if you're doing the replay, I'm pretty good at watching my comments um, and can answer your question almost right away unless I'm sleeping or not by my phone. Um, so if you have questions, you're welcome to post and then um, I will try to answer right away. Remember, you have almost a week. I mean, it's Monday. You have it till Friday to post your photos. So if you have questions, you're welcome to kind of hit the pause button, ask me, and I will let you know. I don't see any likes yet or comments, but I'm going to move on to step three. Smaller in height than the focal point that you cut out. I'm going to try to go on my Facebook, on my computer. If you lose me, you just have to refresh my page. I almost don't want to do this because I'm afraid it will take up too much of my internet bandwidth. So we're preparing the layer that goes behind our focal point. Julie, I saw you got disconnected and hopped back on again. Um, are we ready to move on to the next step? So we're going to cut that out and then that is eventually going to go behind our focal point layer. So if you cut out a Santa, we're putting some sort of label or circle that's going to go behind that Santa. That's our example here. Okay, I'm going to move on to step four. Again, if anyone has any questions, post them in the comments. 
Okay, now we're going to prepare our sentiment. So remember, I'm having you stamp everything first, and then we will um, assemble our card. So whatever sentiment you choose, you are going to stamp it onto the scrap of coordinating cardstock in the color of your choice. So put it on whatever cardstock color you want and stamp it in whatever ink color you would like. And then you're gonna to wanna to trim that scrap with your stamp sentiment into a square or a rectangle. It's gonna depend on your sentiment layout. I just saw a comment here that Julie is ready for step three. I don't know if you are a step behind and need me to go back here. Step three is preparing our focal point layer, the layer that will go behind our focal point. I am nervous that um, my thing froze and I moved on to step four before you guys got a chance to see step three. Don't you guys love technology? Oh my gosh. I deal with this all day at work too. This is driving me nuts. I am so sorry. I feel like this is all exciting to get you ready to stamp and then we come on and my darn technology doesn't work. I feel so horrible about this, you guys. Hopefully we can roll with the punches. Okay, so step four was preparing our sentiment. So whatever you want to say, for example, if a Santa was your focal point and your sentiment says Merry Christmas, you'll be stamping that. Stamp it on um, a scrap of coordinating cardstock in whatever color you want, whatever you prefer. And then you're going to want to trim that um, stamped sentiment cardstock into a square or a rectangle or a tab. For example, I like to um, kind of do this angled cut when I do a sentiment like this. However you like to do that. This is a pretty easy step and I was on four first and moved back. So I, I'm hoping that we're good to go and I'm gonna move ahead of forward here onto um, step five, which is beginning to assemble our card. So, our designer series paper, now just a reminder, designer series paper should be three and a half by four and a quarter inches. So, that designer series paper should be three and a half by four and a quarter inches. Three and a half is going to be the short way of the card, four and a quarter the tall way of the card. You want to adhere that to the center of your card front using dimensionals. Alternatively, you could wait to adhere this to the center after we do the rest and you could do this at the very end. I sometimes like to have that kind of in the center so that I can place all the stuff around it. So that's why I listed this first. So we are putting that on the center of our card front, our card base, using dimensionals. Okay, we're going to keep assembling our card. Next, we're going to take that layer, not our focal point, but our focal point layer. Remember, we have either a circle or a label or some sort of die that goes behind our focal point. We wanna glue that onto our card front that we just put on there with dimensionals. It'll go on the left side of your card about two thirds of the way down. So two thirds down from the top, or in other words, one third up from the bottom. So if this computer screen was the card, you'd be probably putting it right about here. If that's not the place that you wanna put that focal point layer, cause your focal point's gonna go right in front of it, not a problem, you choose where you wanna put it. But if you're trying to make the card that I made, this would be the location of your card. Two thirds of the way down on the left hand side.
I see we've got some more people watching. Make sure you say hello as you pop on so that you can be entered for the drawing for a card kit for watching live. Okay, we are still assembling our card. So we've got our designer series paper attached to the card base. Hi, Jean, welcome. We have the layer that, we're, that we tucked in behind our um, focal point and we've already glued that down. And now we're going to adhere the focal point on top of that layer. And I popped mine up on the card that you can't see yet. I popped it up on dimensionals. So um, that's my instructions here. So we've got card base, then using dimensionals, we did our designer series paper. Then we glued the layer, the focal point layer. And now we're putting our focal point over the top. I'm flipping this around for a minute. So far we have two layers on this card, the designer series paper and now the focal point. The layer behind the focal point is glued to the designer series paper. So we don't wanna do both of those with dimensionals or we're gonna have three layers of dimensionals which would be a little too thick to mail. So um, just explaining that. Okay. I hope I'm not going too fast. Thank you for sharing, Jean. I so appreciate that. I love it when you guys share this. And, um, you know, when you share my videos, you're always entered for uh, get more entries for my door prize drawings. And I've got a great one. We've got a card, two card kits to give away tonight. And just a reminder for those of you popping on right now. Um... Right above in the description up there is a link to order. When you place an order of at least 25 bucks, you're entered to win the hostess rewards. I see Robin hit like. So I think that means we're ready to move on to the next step. It's a mystery who's going to win the hostess rewards. Um, and that's why I called this the double mystery event. Okay, step eight. We are still assembling our card. So now we've got our designer series paper on, we've got the layer behind our focal point image, we've got our focal point image on, and now we're gonna put our sentiment on. So we want to adhere the sentiment to our card and we're going to put it on the right side edge, but vertical middle of our focal point. So um, the way I'm describing this, if this magnifying glass was our focal point image, it would be on this side of it, about in the middle. Does that make sense? If any of that's confusing, please let me know. I really tried to make these instructions simple, but we all know what, I, what I'm trying to communicate may not always be the way you guys understand it, right? I see we've got some more people hopping on watching. Make sure you say hello when you pop on. Um, let's see, we are assembling our card front. So we've done a whole bunch of stamping so far. And now we're putting our card together. For those of you who are catching us in the middle of our mystery stamping event, you can definitely catch the replay and start over from the beginning and stamp right along with us. And you can still be entered to win the prizes. I'm giving one away live. And I am giving away one to um, someone who posts the card that they made. In the link that I posted up above there, I'm doing that prize drawing on Friday. You also have until Friday to get your orders in so that you get a chance at the hostess rewards. So... We're adhering the sentiment to the card. Now, I'm going to let you decide if you want to glue this, glue dot it, or use dimensionals. Um, I don't know how comfortable you feel with layers, and sometimes it depends if you're mailing the card or if you are handing it to somebody, how many layers you end up creating with the card. <clears throat> I gotta get some water here, my throat is dry. This is more talking than when I stamp, you guys. I thought you guys would be doing all the hard work. <coughs> and I 
would be just yapping away here, but oh my goodness, this is hard doing all this talking. Ooh, that's a great question, Jean. Any sneak peeks to what your card looks like? You will get to see my card in the comments later this week. I have it right here, though. It's done. But I can't tell you what it looks like. I am so excited to see what you guys come up with. I saw two likes pop by on the screen, which means we're next ready for our next step. Now we are putting the finishing touch on our card. So I had suggested some thin ribbon or um, what else did I put on there? Twine, um, linen trim. Um, you are going to want to tie a bow and adhere that to the card. And I suggested to the um, above and to the left of your sentiment. Now, you all know I love to also stamp the inside of my cards. So if you want to stamp the inside of your card, you can go ahead and do that as well. So we're just putting the finishing touch on our card. I am drinking water galore because my throat is getting so dry talking. I want to know, are you guys like um, soda drinkers when you stamp? Or do you have snacks? You can see I've got lots of snacks at my desk here. <laughs> um, this isn't my crafting desk, though. My crafting desk is behind me over there. And earlier I was making the project for what I'm going to do live uh, Wednesday on my lunchtime live. I should show you guys that. I'm just going to show you. I'm going to give you a little sneak peek. I'm not quite done with it, but that's what we're making Wednesday. Ooh, I just flashed it quick. And I've got an incredible fun fold for next week. Um, that I recorded already because I won't be live next week, but there will be a live video for you. Okay, back so you can see finishing touches. Tie a bow in your ribbon and adhere it to the card above and to the left of your sentiment. And then if you want to stamp the inside of your card, go ahead and do that. If you want to put some bling on there, you know, you got to embellish it up with some rhinestones or something like that. That would also be beautiful. I don't have any rhinestones on my card, but you definitely could do that and it would be gorgeous. Jean says you love the plaid. I do love the plaid, but here's the thing, Jean. I am using so much plaid because, let me flip this around so I can talk to you. I'm using all the plaid because I am bound and determined to use up my designer series paper and look. I'm doing such a good job that this is all I have left. That's it from my thick plaid. And the cool thing about plaid is, do you know what I hear all the time? Everyone tells me, I have such a hard time making man cards. How can I make some more neutral cards that aren't all full of flowers and um, more feminine details, right? And plaid is perfect for that because even, I'm going to give this as an example. In my card kit, if this was the card you made, you could give this to a guy. That's what's awesome about plaid. It's not too frilly. Yes, masculine cards. But it's pretty enough to go to your favorite girlfriend or your grandma or your mom as well. Like, you could give this to anybody. Plaid's awesome. I love it. Okay, I saw a couple likes, which I think is telling me we are ready. And guess what? Your card's done. Your card is done. If you want to decorate the envelope, go ahead and do that. So now what? Again, I put a link above using the mystery host code. And there's the mystery host code. Every order of at least 25 bucks will qualify you for a chance to win the hostess benefits. And in every increment of $25. So if you place a $100 order, you will get four entries for the hostess rewards. And 
I want you to inspire everyone with your creation. That's why I am not letting you see the card I created until later, because I'm so excited to see all the variations um, that you guys made from this event. There's a link up above for where you can post a picture of your card. Um, just snap a quick picture on your phone and upload it to that link. It's totally painless. I'm so excited to see what you guys came up with. Um, okay, I'm going to just take a minute here and look at my notes and make sure that I didn't forget anything because I have a scatterbrain and I forget everything. Just ask my husband. The other day he forgot to do something and he's like, yeah, you're rubbing off on me because I can't remember to do stuff anymore. I'm like, oops. Um, okay. Oh, I just want to remind you, your orders have to be placed by 1130 a.m. Central Standard Time on Friday. And let me look at what date that is. Friday is the 23rd, October 23rd. 11.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. That's what time I need the orders in because I'm going to do the prize um, award on my lunch break on Friday. So I need those orders in by 11.30 so I can um, pick the hostess. And then I'll do the same thing for the cards you posted for that prize. Um, the more the merrier. So share this with your crafty friends. I see you, a bunch of you shared already. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your shares. It just makes me so happy to get to inspire people's creativity. And um, a reminder to you, I want, I have this note, I have my notes here. Um, Thursday, so Wednesday, I'm going live at 1130 with that awesome card that I quick gave you a sneak peek for. But Thursday, I'm going live let me see, do I have it here? No, it's on my desk somewhere. With the paper pumpkin kit. And I'm going to talk to you about paper pumpkin. And I have a fabulous alternative project that I'm going to demonstrate for you so that you can see what else to make with the cool supplies in your paper pumpkin kit. And I'll do that live Thursday night. That one is at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time as well. Thank you, guys. But I have a prize. Okay, I have a prize drawing. And I was gonna do this with a screen share. Oh man, let me try to type this in one-handed. I know that Robin and Julie were playing along. Did you get your cards finished? While I'm typing this in one-handed, so I got Robin, Julie, and Jean. Let me look at my comments here and see, did I miss anyone? Nope, that's it. And I'm so sorry if some of you tried to get on live and you couldn't. I really was having technical difficulties tonight. Okay, hopefully you can see this. I'm going to shuffle, 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 shuffle the names. We're going to spin and see who wins. Hey, Robin. Congratulations, Robin. You. Whoops. Congrats. You win this amazing card kit. Um, you'll make four cards. Of these plaid Robin should play the lottery because she won my last card kit too awesome way to go um, and Julia and you're just finishing make sure you post it um, in the photos and um, Jean if I know you caught us in the middle if you can uh, watch the replay then um, post your creation um, in the link to the comments so that you get a chance to enter um, or win the card kit as well. Okay, I think I'm wrapping up. I've probably taxed my internet long enough tonight. I'm getting a beeping that my phone is running out of battery. 
that would have been horrible too. So I'm going to let you guys get on with your evening. Thank you so, so much for joining me. If you want to see more of my creations, head over to my blog, countrycardsbyrose.blogspot.com. I would love to earn your Stampin' Up! business. I'm so passionate about inspiring your creativity. And just a reminder that if you're catching this replay on YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you don't miss any tutorials from me. I'm about to start a new series called Make It Monday, where I post some videos on YouTube every week. So thanks a lot, you guys, for joining me. And I will see you here hopefully Wednesday for my live lunchtime event. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks for joining.